I was um, in uh, what's it called portrait mode instead of uh, instead of in landscape. So hopefully you guys can hop over to this stream. I th it'll probably take a sec to see that the other stream is down and that this one is up. But today I want to talk about uh, mostly I wanted to uh, talk about all the different things that I'm breeding. So it's just kind of an update on all the things that I'm breeding intentionally. Of course, there's always the unintentional breeding and so forth that goes on with nature tanks. Hello again, uh, fake name you found me. Awesome. So this is a late night uh, deal. Uh, I really wanted to do one earlier, but I, co I couldn't because of um, my brain just wasn't working um I, the elephant in the room obviously if you guys didn't know got struck by lightning now i am having trouble talking and things also um heads up i will be around now for the next six months probably if not more um because I have several surgeries that I didn't even didn't even cross my mind. So we got MRI. It showed traumatic brain injury, like a football player would have, or something like that, um, with the bruising and the tissue of uh, I don't know the myelin sheaths, or something or other. There's there's I don't know some sort of damage. Uh, but hopefully the swelling goes down in my brain and we'll be good. It's not severe enough that they felt they needed to hospitalize me or anything. It's just basically a bad concussion. So, just supposed to keep an eye on that. The bummer news is that I shattered my L5 vertebrae, the, the little wing of the, of the vertebrae. And then uh, pinched off and completely, in the words of the radiologist, obliterated my spinal canal there. Um, and so I need to have surgery there to get a fake disc put in, like a synthetic one. And then I also need to have, uh, let's, let's turn it around to the fish, because watch fish while I'm explaining this. So bottom line is, I have one surgery for damaged internal organ issues, one surgery for the blocked discs or blocked nerves, and one for the disc and actual spine or vertebrae that are having issues. So that's all the lame, boring stuff out of the way. Uh, I thought I would share with you tonight all the different things that I'm working on breeding or you know, all that jazz. So, in here, you can see that even on some of these small guys, I don't know what's been doing it. I've been feeding them beans from my garden, and uh, th I've been able to sex these endlers really young. Like, this this one in particular that is hanging out by the pea, it's a, it's a pea from the garden, and he's got red poop or I don't know what it is coming out of his belly you can tell that's a male already because of the dots on his back you see see on his tail there so I know with my with this strain that's gonna be a male so kinda cool that that young that's showing up also I move my uh, Pseudomagill reticulatus um, what are those little plantlets running across? Uh, these are uh, glosso, glosso. Sorry, I can't even say the name or remember it. But if you look up glosso, you'll find it. Glossa stigma, gloss, glossostoma, glossa stigma. Um, and then, um, but yeah. So right now, this is the 17 gallon. Aqu nature aquarium that gets CO2 um, everything's purling in the tank right now I kinda gutted the tank for the plant prize winner drawing so I'm sure a lot of you guys probably saw if you're on the Facebook group you saw the post and I sent out um, probably no joke probably five six hundred dollars worth of plants <laughs> 
Um, just because I was feeling saucy and grateful to be alive. And uh, when I do a competition, I want you guys to know, like, it's for real. And I'm, I, I want it to be fun. I want the reward to be good. And I... Um, I am so excited when I win something or get something or new plants or whatever that I wanted to, you know, up the ante. So finally I got a hold of, not through Bentley, Bentley Pasco, I was like twisting his arm to hook me up with some of these uh, tiger um, crypts, but these are black and red crypt spiralis red tiger. And, uh, these are just put in from tissue cultures, and let's see if we can see the striping. You can kind of see the striping starting, but they are in immersed form and will be changing drastically. So they tend to have like a dark part of the leaf, and then like the stem is like a, a pinkish purple red, I don't know. And then over here, we've got like more balled up one that's just kind of, it's got, it's not showing up in this light real well, but it's dark. It's like a dark purple. Um, and I got that at Aquarium Zen, and they got it, or Steve, I should say, ordered it from uh, Singapore, and that was an ADA distributor. Brand new plant. Also got a hold of some black Sintang uh, boost. This is one piece of it. Uh, it doesn't look very black. It's also a little bit chewed up. Uh, and then I'll show you the other piece I have of it in the other tank later. Um, also have made some... Uh, yeah, good evening everyone. Thanks for filtering in. in this tank, I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to leave everything that's growing in the back row kind of growing and I'll trim it and work on it. I'm working on making it so that one root system like this one here, there's a, a root or a branch of it here, branch of it here, branch of it here. So if you can, oh, sorry guys. If you can see that's all one plant and these are, this is just three plants so yet it covers if we look above it's a tiered wall if you will of pogo stem and um erectus that i've just trimmed that way at, trimmed at a um <clears throat> i guess what would it be a 45 degree angle and uh in a certain spot and then I just keep trimming it there and so it's kind of growing outward rather than splitting upward so in this tank right now we have uh, we have the erythromicrons which uh, are doing well they're also known as emerald resboras I have no idea why people call them that uh, granted some do have more emerald marking but we have mostly CPDs and one of the CPDs is sick or he got battered. And I'm trying to decide real quick, like, which of the two happened. You guys can probably see it right there. He's missing scales. And it looks as though he's sick. But it might, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if he is sick or not. He seems to be moving fine. And there was, if you recall, a, and no one else has it yet. Now, if I saw it on anyone else in a second, I would get rid of it. Also, I might quarantine him just to be safe. But since there's so many other CPDs in here, so right now I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, like, hanging out, sneaking around. And then we also have, I took the, um, uh, what's it called? Sorry, guys. As you know, my brain's not working quite right still. This is a male, by the way, when they've got that hunchback, the CPDs, when they're dark like this, and they've got a hunchback, that means it's a male. And, uh, come on, focus. And the males are usually skinnier, too. Whereas the females have a dark dot 
right behind uh, their anal fin, and that dark dot is a gravid spot, just like in live bears, where the baby or where the eggs are laid each day. They lay eggs every day. And they scatter them every day. Whereas the males almost look sickly, hump-like, just kind of weird. They're like almost little salmon, the way they um, are bent like that. Also kind of cool is you can see the CO2 building up here. I have a trick that I saw in one of Aquarium Co-op's videos, but it's a trick that I found in a book a while back. And... Uh, it's a, a way to take, if you've got one CO2 tank, but it's only got one diffuser, uh, putting the Gatorade bottles upside down in all your tanks, so you can have some CO2 in all your tanks. But we should have uh, a good number of males and females in this tank, and it was dense enough that we were seeing babies, like like um, baby uh and also, you can see here's another erythromicron. There's all sorts of stuff in here. There's a pleco in here as well. But the erythromicron and the danios uh, are who I want to breed. So I'm really working on getting, and also you can see I'm just growing them out, but any of the little blue eyes, those are uh, pseudomagill reticulatus blue eyes. So when you, we go downstairs, you'll see that I've moved them from the shrimp tank up to the big boy actual tank, and now they live here. Um, oh, there's the pleco. He's just a calico ancestress. Uh, and then there are two Corridoras, and uh, was it an Anius and a... Mm, I can't remember the name of the other one. Parrot Chax or something like that. Uh, I think it starts with a P. And then we have, I don't know why they're so mousy, but we've got two female guppies that hopped in here, or I put in here, uh, that are from the tank where I'm breeding the tiger endlers. So all the guppy fry in here supposedly are going to be tiger endler uh, babies hopefully not contaminated. Also, I just got that male um, and set him aside, the one with the markings on on him. So I'm going to take a closer look, kind of right now, actually. And I still can't tell for sure, but uh, he seems healthy. I don't know. I think I'm going to let him chill. If anything, it will be like a bacterial or fungal type infection and uh, <clears throat> hopefully not the biggest deal in the world. But the, uh, what's it called, the live bears in this tank do not seem to, they're scared, which is very odd. And so I took out the Siamese algae eater that had been in here that had gotten up to three inches. See, you can see more of the... More of the CPDs and more of uh, just more fish coming out. The babies in this tank, I really have no sense of how many there are because I'm seeing them, you know, I see them down here in the corner. I see them up towards the top uh, and I see them all over the place. So there's probably a good amount. There are four reticula, uh, reticulatus babies in here of the Sidamagills. They're a very rare one in the hobby that you just don't see at stores and stuff. So I'm excited. Hope they grow up, stay healthy. Um, and uh, yeah. Oh, on to the next tank. This tank is the non intentional breeder uh, of actual fish. Oops, sorry. Let me turn off all my notifications. Um, all right, so the next thing is that uh, we've got over here, we've got rainbows, uh, Praycox, the two females that I've had for five months now that have not had a male with them. I used to have a group of like six of each gender, and then I, I traded them away. But, lo and behold, they left a present on some hornwort, and in a shrimp tank, they were born, and 
they have very, very teeny babies, so they really don't stand a chance in here, the babies. But I threw a spawning mop in, just in case. I'll check it every so often. And if there's eggs, I'll throw them somewhere, uh, you know, incubate them. Uh, no matter who they are, um, I will do that um, just to see what happens. Over here, this is not the mother lily. Uh, this is the Nymphaea micrantha purple morph from Sudan. Uh, and it has just gone crazy, uh, grown out really wide. I think it's starting to send a runner. And this is the one I kept. I gave the mother to Lucas Bretz yesterday. I mailed it out with all of the uh, awards um, for the contest. So, also Betsy got a, got one too. Um, some of these black neon tetras are uh, kind of interesting. They're filling out now, and some of them are taking on a purple or a blue hue like a smoky midnight blue purple hue and some are just staying small so uh, the whole tank has been treated for worms so i don't know the deal there's also a couple oddballs in here this is just my community tank of oddballs uh the siamese algae eater there were two in here and then one in the tank we were just at well what happened was my biggest one my six incher five incher he jumped out, and he made it all the way from, whoops, let's zoom out, from this tank here, oops, sorry guys, I know that is nauseating, stop, whoa, there we go, okay, phone's being really difficult, and my hand-eye coordination's real bad, so, he jumped out of here, I put a lid on last night, actually, because the house was just getting too humid, so I had cardboard as a lid, and he got out through back here, this space, and he jumped out, and he cleared, and I found him on the floor all the way over there. So I don't know if he flopped a little bit or what, but he was dead in the morning. And so I haven't ever had that happen with these guys before, but they do get wound up. They do bash the glass. They'd be tank busters if the tank wasn't stronger. Um, so... Just a word of caution, any fish that get riled up, that can happen. Also, I treated these uh, orange eye lemon tetras, who I would like to breed soon. Uh, I treated them with some dewormer, uh, as well as uh, anti-parasit, uh, um, <coughs> pardon me, uh, something that gets rid of parasites. Um, Bentley, hello. So this, this, uh, guy still seems to have the worms or parasite or whatever it is. It may be damage that is just stuck now in, in this poor guy. Um, I've noticed it in Tetras happened many times before in the clearer Tetras where they get these dark plaques and they start to form along their spinal column and then boom, they uh, start getting twitchy seizure things and floating sideways, and then they catch themselves, and then they die. So we're trying to prevent that, um, but basically it looks like it treated most of them. It looks like it treated everyone except the worst two off, but the other guys are looking more orange again, their uh, their orange trigger, as it's called down below, is looking nice and vibrant. And there's some reshuffling going on in the tank for who's top male. Bentley, as you may have noticed, I got the male for the two female praycocks that have been in here for five months that were survivors. Um, Welcome everybody coming in, uh, and so they have a mop. Now with everything in this tank, there's a fat chance that they'll use the mop. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but the mop is there. Hey, Betsy. Um, so I'll check the mop every couple days and just see if anyone uses it. I don't know. We'll see. I'll try to put it in the middle too. Um, the other thing going on in here is just raising plants, feeding green beans out of the garden for the catfish and stuff in here. Also, the Siamese algae eaters seem to really like these green beans. They um, 
chew on them instead of my nice lily. Uh, and here I've crowded out the light source pretty much completely of anything uh, to live down low other than like stem plants. So I got to reassess and pull out some of these crypts and things like that that are hiding down in here. I've got a pink panther and I've also got a pink flamingo one. Now this tank has become uh, storage. It used to be a tetra tank and now it's kind of just storage for uh, if I have a bunch of males that are endlers or something, I throw them in here. Um, it's a magical tank in that I just don't fiddle with much. I add uh, like six pumps of Easy Green every so often, every like once a week, and that's about it. And a cap full of iron, and it does its thing. It looks like we may have a female down on that rock there. I'm not sure. We'll have to check that out. Um, Bentley. Uh, thanks for saying hi. Bentley, I also need to talk to you about a tank because I'm thinking I was just told that for six months to a year I will be out of commission with my surgeries back to back. Uh, yes, I do sell plants. I just did ship some plants. Uh, yeah, the 30 rimless. Uh, also, yeah, yeah, that and I might even be considering something bigger, but the, the main thing is, like, I'm thinking about putting another tank either here or putting this tank downstairs and putting a nice big tank over here and moving the mirror. But this is, so this is some new stuff uh, going on over here. Today, um, I was, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I was extremely depressed. Um, you can get in contact with me, um, Jeff, on... Uh, through the Facebook group or drop me a message with your email if you want. My email is not a secret. It's alexanderjwilliamson at gmail.com. Um, and uh, there's a Facebook group by the same name as this, so you can find uh, me there as well as a lot of these other great folks that are hanging out with us tonight. So I got this new light. Um, it's called Archaea, and which is kind of a funny name for like a new uh, slimline design. It's not the ultra slimline. Uh, it hold on. I let me see. Amy Harrell says I have cherry red shrimp and red crystals. Will they breed together? No, they will not breed together. Uh, they may compete for food a bit, but they should be just fine. As long as you keep the water parameters closer to the crystal shrimp's needs than to the neocaridinas. Neocaridinas are much more versatile in what they can tolerate as far as water hardness and pH. Whereas caridinas need a lower pH and generally a lower water uh, hardness as well. Um, caridinas, your crystal reds, uh, those are caridina can cantonensis uh they also will oftentimes like grab a piece of food and run off with it and so they're a little more aggressive than the others so um so yeah in here i got a new light i kind of just went out and bought a new light because my wife was harping on me that my old t5 uh two t5s it was eating up 240 watts at a time, which I didn't even really think about or realize how bad those old school lights were for that. But I got rid of it and I figured that it'll pay for itself in like eight months or something like that. Um, so this was like, I think $89. I shouldn't be spending money on that. I know I'm ha I've got a crazy bill for my health and um, some folks may think that, you know, I've got to go fund me up and people have con contributed. And so I did have some guilt doing that, but my mental health, I'm going to be stuck in this house. I don't have my ability to, can't look at screens too long, backlit ones. I see double vision on those and, and things like that. And, um, 
basically, to me, this is going to be a big part of my therapy and learning to get strength back into my hands and things. Um... And just learning to talk through this channel, through my fish, through growing plants, and breeding. And so, <clears throat> these guys were bonkers nuts. These are called Orange Flame or Fire Ring Danios. Mr. D, take care. Um, you take care, man. Uh, so... These guys were bonkers all over the tank, and I don't know why I, I thought, you know what'll help that if I add five more? Look at this, the auto synchless is out, it's nighttime, so sometimes I like doing these um, nighttime uh, videos because different stuff's out, but my banded uh, auto, or auto synchless, however you want to say it, is out. <clears throat> but these orange uh, fire Daniels, I really like them. They're getting, they like, they get big. And I'm looking into how to breed them. And f so far, the biggest way that people seem to breed them is, like, with a lot of Daniels, uh, like with zebra Dan Daniels, you can take marbles and you can put marbles all over the bottom of your tank and they will not be able to eat their eggs then until they fry hatch. So then once you see a fry or two, you pull the parents out and boom, you're good to go. Uh, you can let the babies come up. So also in here, we've got the yellows, the Neocaridina yellows. Um, these ones are looking really good. I hadn't seen them for a while when I put the... I had originally put the Praycocks, the Dwarf Neon Rainbows in here. And the shrimp were just gone. And I think they were just too nippy and aggressive and scared the shrimp. And so now I'm seeing one, two, three, like just a group of shrimp. Also, we've got a couple odds and ends of endlers in here. They're all sired from this male... And this male is also, he was one of Lucas's quote-unquote kings. So all the ones that you saw in the first tank of the night, all the baby endlers, they are from him. He is their papa um, with different mothers. So these mothers, you can see that dark spot by their the back of their belly bulge. That's called a gravid spot. So these females are all pregnant. And... Uh, the babies get eaten by the females really quickly in this tank. And so I have planted a ridiculous amount of ground cover in here while I was doing all the trimming for the giveaway. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks like nine of these, um, of these fire Danios. And I'll get a good picture in a video in the future that's not a live stream. But they have a real pumpkin orange or uh, that kind of color. And then they have like this metallic bluey to sapphire color um, that looks really beautiful. Uh, this new light really shows out those colors. Come on, guys. Get in the frame. Uh, and... And the males versus females have a little bit different marking. That's a, a female, if you couldn't tell because all the males are bugging her, but also because she's got that bulge in her belly and she's quite a bit bigger than the other ones. Um, so they're all doing their thing, running around in circles. Uh, I can't tell if this one is a Fire Danio or if it is a Gold Ring or a Kayeth Danio. Those three are all pretty difficult to tell apart when they're young. Um, but yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, I didn't even know how many I put in here. But the plan is some of the shrimp are not quite as yellow. Uh, this guy being a good example. And I haven't decided if I'm going to cull him yet or what's going to be the deal. But I just have noticed while we're sitting here that there are some blue eyed baby fish in here. And. That leads me to believe that they are related to the fish that Lucas sent me because the female had blue eyes. Here she is. Uh, this endler has blue eyes or grayish, like silver colored eyes. And uh, the other ones 
don't necessarily in my harem, but everyone related to her has these silver eyes and kind of a white body or a cream body compared to the other ones. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, I love the smaller Danios. I do too, and this is as big of a Danio as I would go. I, I don't like, I mean, I think the zebra Danios are beautiful, don't get me wrong, but unless I had a really big tank, I wouldn't get any bigger. These ones are, you can see my hand, uh, you can see, uh, what's another fish? There's female endlers in here, there's a male endler. So they're probably, uh, the biggest one's probably two inches long, I would say, and most of them are an inch and a half, something like that. Um, but they're part of the chain Danio subset, and some of them have more of a broken chain pattern, and some of them have like a solid dot 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 kind of pattern. Um, but they're, uh, they're my new little toy in this tank, and uh, hopefully we can get them to breed at some point. Also, uh, lots of plants in here. All the Rotalas are in here, and they're, uh, these are all the Rotalas I own are all smushed into here. Plus some hygrophilas. There's also, man, that yellow shrimp is so nice looking. Um, are they all spunky as zebra daniels? Uh, no. Some zebra daniels can be a little nippy, a little uh, insane when they like bash themselves into stuff uh, and they jump out of your tank frequently. These guys are a lot less like that. These guys do race around the tank, especially in the morning or when they're getting fed. Do I have food handy? I can feed them and show you if I do. Um, I don't have the food. Oh, I do. Uh, I'm going to feed them some Daphnia. And so these they really like. And we might even get like a little jump. I have to be careful and feed them in the center. Um, I know that was a good amount of food, but they haven't eaten today, this group, so. Uh, um, so, once they realize what's in here, the guppies all want it, but here we go. Now, here comes the Daniel. Female Daniels always hit it way harder the food but look at that they do this weird like weaving where they wait for it to spread out a bit and then they'll try to make one run and plan their uh, plan of attack and they'll hit you know they'll go and try to get as much as they can but everybody's just kind of excited and out and about now there's also um so uh, there this tank i'm also um propagating booths I've got one little tiger lily that, since this is low tech, just nothing seems to be happening. This boost is kind of cool. It's a red, um, it's called red and blue. Uh, and then there's just some interesting little plants in here. Uh, some trimmings that I literally had less than half of an inch of, and I buried them in the gravel and just waiting to see what comes out. But you can see that the shrimp really are coming out now that I got rid of the prey cocks this afternoon. And so that makes me feel good. I think these fish are definitely going to mow down on um, uh, about um, they're going to eat any baby shrimp that they see. However, hopefully I can build over time with some pearl weed or, or some swasertong down there. I can build them a refuge um, in a rock pile where they will survive. Because right now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out that I can see, which is more than I've seen in like since I got the other ones. All right, I'm trying to see. Um, question. Sorry, guys. The text is um, it's double for me. Like it's um, what uh, double vision when I look at a phone right now, or when I look at a TV screen or anything. I'm my vision is not good, uh, and I'm doing this cast now because my I can speak the best that I've spoken today, right now for some reason I don't know. Um, Amy Harl also. Uh, girlfriend, I had to, let's see here. 
What was Amy's question? I'm trying to find it. Uh, when do you start to breed? I have a really big chunk of horn wart. Will this be enough for the babies to hide in? When, is that a win or when they start to breed real young? Um, they start to breed real young. Like, um, let's see, do I have other, where am I, where did I put my other Daniels? Oh, they're all upstairs in the big tank. These guys know that I'm here for food and this is my experimental thing. Um, <laughs> ship head. Uh, these new, uh, new to me, Sarah Daphnia, freeze dried Daphnia, the fish just love. So, I'm gonna feed, um, but let's, let's show what's going on around here. So, the plecos are all out. Now, that bean looks swollen, but it's full of... Uh, it's got a catfish in it, but I can't, I don't think it's showing up, but, uh, so here's Papa Pleco. I'm afraid he might be guarding a new brood already, which would be frustrating, kind of. Um, also, we've got some new blue eyes here, and I don't know what they are. Uh, I'm... We've got blue eye, um, these are killifish up here, um, or lamp eye, where are they at, come on, focus, um, and I got two of them the day they were born from Steve Waldron at Aquariums Inn, and then over here we've got, this is still the catfish tank, but oddly enough I've put some shrimp in here, and the shrimp are doing their thing and seem to be okay. Um, some are getting eaten. There's a baby green dragon pleco. They're really, really, um, uh, varying in their, um, colors. I'll show you a huge group of them in a minute up, up top. Um, but these are the ones that stayed with their, I couldn't catch or whatever, stayed in the pack. Um, there's another one right up there. These ones that have stayed in the tank w where they need to run for their lives are growing at a faster pace than everyone else. Way, 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 way quicker. Like, they're almost double the size. What's the blue guppy-like fish in the thumbnail? So that's these guys. These are blue Japanese endlers, and I've been messing with them for six generations. Coming up on seven. And basically, they look similar to this originally, um, but I've been breeding them on purpose so that they have, um, let's see if you can see this, the light, this light is really poor for this, um, but I've been breeding them so that they have a purple iridescence on one way and a blue on the other and then yellow in their liar tails and then I've crossed them focus cross them with the leopard endlers that you can see that are in here leopard rainbow endlers uh, these guys Let's focus guys come on is there something on my lens or I don't know so this tank is kind of the experiment tank where just anything that can happen does except for I'll pull these males out and then the females up here are the Japanese blue females and so if I need if I want to cross something I'll grab whichever male I want put them up here and right now we have the leopard endler generation crossed um, and we crossed it once with a native Show a green dragon for Kevin. I will, um, let's see. Um, as the rest of us, please feel free. Alex has trouble reading. I had to come up with something. Find something floating. Also, ha add something floating to the top of that. What was Amy's question about hornwort? Um, but in any case, like, oh, here's another little green dragon. Little teeny one, though. Uh... And they look like little Pac-Men or something. Also, I've got uh, this school now of 
Ruby Tetras. I really love Ruby Tetras. They don't get enough credit. Um, and then there's the Juliet Corridoras. Um, oh, Baby's Hiding. Yeah, if you look at these tanks, these are tanks that have predators in them, and you can see what the top looks like and what the bottom looks like. There is a spot for a baby to hide up high, low, and in the, media, in the middle. Um, this is for shrimp or for baby um, plecos, basically. Uh, and then the big pleco lives under here. He's over six inches. The female, where is she? Is she under here? No, she's not under here. So I'm going to show you guys, because I haven't checked on him in a while. So let's let's check on the pleco situation. Oh, there's the female back there. She's got a, a broad head. Um, there should be some fish with stingers under here, so i got to be careful. But here is the big male pleco. And then back there are, well, you're not going to probably see them, but the orca, the orca um, catfish, as, as I call them, they're uh, tatia mosaicas. But here is the father of all the little green dragons. Come on, focus, man. The light is just not focusing, or my phone, or something. Something's up. Um, so, all right, let me move some stuff aside, and we'll get look at some a bunch of green dragon baby plecos. The ones that I'm hoping to sell and make some money. Um, as I said, in this hobby, um, I'm hoping to make the Patreon um, and the... Or, sorry, the... Um, the uh, Super Chats, anything that people Super Chat, and any. Uh, half of the Patreon, and then anything that I make by selling, that will still go towards the hobby, even though I'm sick, and I know I should be spending money all on that, but I need my mental relaxation that is this. So, um, let's take a look at all the baby plecos. So, here they are. Um, they're all over the tank. They make a mess. They poop everywhere. Hold on. They look foggy. It is humid in here. It's like 80 some degree, 85 or 87 and humid today, but, um, and in this room it's super humid. But this is a green bean and they're all just kind of munching on the green bean. Um, here's another one. I'm trying to find one that's well lit for y'all without having to zoom in and screw up the, like it just, it doesn't do them justice because they've got these interesting markings on them. But they're all over, I mean, they're they're all over. And if you move something, they all go scurrying and you can see all the wood that they've already eaten and made a mess of on the ground. Um, and then, uh, I think there's more. Are there more up on the heater? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to get a, a nice up-close shot. So here's a nice shot. Um, I want them to be green. Other people want them to have long fins or this or that. But my goal is I want them to be more of a darker green. So the ones that I'm going to keep and try to breed will be a darker green. Because right now these are kind of like an earth tone, like sage green pleco. Um, also over here, I need to pull this mop tonight. So I will do that now. But we've got the RU2s. Hold on, let me zoom back out for y'all. I'm breeding these right now currently too. These are the RU2s. They are beautiful. Apparently some baby plecos have sn snuck over on the side. The baby plecos are bold enough that they actually will climb up over this um, little fencing. Uh, but the males are all mad that I took the mop, and so they'll puff up and they'll come around and like come near me, and then if I move at all, they'll freak out. So, hold well, on, let me set this down so I can grab something. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Because his mind is not for rent. He's playing down his arrogance. 
All right, sorry guys. Uh, baby shrimp will swarm to the sides of the tank, at least mine do. I put a chunk of hornwort in the aquarium's big piece length with the tank. I wanted to know if it would be... No, I would use... Instead of using... Like, this is really just there as something for them to hang on to and to encourage... Encourage, uh... Basically, biological growth. But the shrimp that I have... Let's take a look at these shrimp tanks. And these are shrimp tanks that don't have any predators in them per se I always have the top of my shrimp tank have a lot for them to hold on to like you need enough that a fish can't charge in there and and cause damage like if it charges in it's gonna hit something or it has to like juke its way through there now, the shrimp are probably all full of eating the green beans that I put in last night. And I, I leave them in for two nights if they're picked off the vine that night. And then they soften up and the babies all eat them the second night. Um, over here, the snails, you can see, are eating... What the heck are they eating? Hold on, I'm going to take something and flick off what the heck they're eating. Did a shrimp die or something? No, they're just being weird. Um, but the shrimp over here, same deal. See how I've got the hornwort? I take at least, you know, 10 strands of hornwort and interweave it. If you have a light that's worth its salt at all, you should be able to get that hornwort growing like a weed. Like, And if, if you can't for some reason, if your light's not good enough... You can literally put it in a bucket or a, or a Tupperware container or something and throw it in the windowsill with some fish tank water so that it has some nitrates and stuff. And it'll grow inches in days. Like, I've had hornwort grow up to five inches a day in my big tank. It's, it's pretty crazy stuff. Now, in a low-light tank, sometimes it just sits and it stays the same size. Now, this is interesting. I have not seen this blue bolt this color yet, ever. And so I don't know if she just shed or what the deal is, but she is a very blue color, and she is full of babies. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and then over here we had a pregnant. These are Neocaridinas here. These are just cherry shrimp. Because they're the strongest, cherry shrimp are the strongest of the Neocaridina. They've been around the longest. And the, um, this tank is geared almost completely towards Caridina. That is creepy looking. What is that? Oh, it's the other blue bolt. It looked like a spider, didn't it, guys? Looks like a black widow or something, but with a white butt. Um... But yeah, so, and then these are the panda, this is the Devon tank, um, no, I don't think, I haven't seen any hydra for a while in this tank, when I put the, uh, when I put the little rainbow fish fry in here, they ate everything hydra related, everything, like, see these little seed shrimp down here, oh no, that's planaria is what that is. But all these kind of things that probably came out of the beans, um, the fish will eat that in, like, seconds. So, fry, it's great to raise fry in a shrimp tank. Um, this, no, this currently right here, and it, because of all those little things, I'm going to be pulling out uh, these beans right now. Like... I don't want any more of whatever the heck those things are propagating in the tank. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm happy that Blue Dreams, uh, they're all hiding right now, but in the morning they're all on here. There's lots of baby Blue Dreams. Um, and they seem to be doing well, even though the adults haven't done super well. 
the babies have, and so, yay? The Devon tank over here, um, yeah, Planaria are just kind of gross. They don't really do much harm, but they can take over a shrimp tank pretty quickly, um, and therefore, uh, I like to not let them get out of control. I mean, there's still shrimp pellets in here from the other night. Like, that pea was the, the food of choice. Um, but all of Flip Aquatic's Caridina are still alive in here, which is pretty cool. It's been months and months. And this is not using RO. This is using local water. Uh, over here, on the other hand... They're not all still alive. I think there's five out of ten crystal reds, and there's like five or six blue dreams left that are from Lucas, which is sad. But they had babies galore. If you start looking around, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of babies. Dun 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 dun. I'm just gonna smush some of these planaria while I'm over here. Eh. It's kind of hopeless, um, and really, this just means that now I don't feed the tank for a couple days and everything will be gravy. Uh, or you can get the gravel back and just kind of suck them up. Suck it up. But yeah, there's different age shrimp in this tank, ranging from juvenile all the way up to adult. There's another mid-level about to be an adult hanging out on the rocks. And the little guys tend to hit the deck at night. They're not out late at night. <clears throat> but I did notice that the Caridina ate all their babies, uh, as opposed to the Neo Caridina. Caridina shrimp, when I didn't feed them while I was gone for a little while, they ate all their babies. So, fun. Uh, yeah. Um, well, you guys, it's been real. Let's, let me take a look and see if I miss questions. I really can't see. Also, so you can see what I'm seeing. Can you see what I see? This is what happens is there's just like this buildup, and I keep clearing it out too, but there's a neurological component to it. Um... But, again, I wanted to say thank you all so much for your help on Patreon and on GoFundMe and all of those places. Uh, it means a lot. And it goes a long way towards helping pay the bills because insurance is great. But, you know, they say, oh, we're going to pay 95% of $100,000. And then you're like, whoa. Uh, Chase, yes, I've got to go to, um, occupational or, what's it called, something therapy, like, like learning how to use, learning how to talk again, PTSD treatment, that kind of stuff, tomorrow at 9 a.m., but after that, I'm around if you want to come by, Chase, uh, I would love for you to come get some plants, dude, um, yeah, I'm trying not to get too depressed, and honestly, my fish keep me pretty happy. I want to do, like, one really nice community tank, and that would be, like, an awesome project. See, here you can see uh, a tiger endler that has been mixed back with a, n a natural endler, like a tom bar, uh, or... No, I'm sorry, I'm getting my words mixed up now, but... These are different levels of variation, and I could explain it better later, but um, the two that are important in here are this one here and that one there, because those are the ones that will be fathering babies uh, in the future uh, in the tank upstairs. Now, this one here, I, don't, I wish you guys could see better lighting. It's purple. It's full-on purple, even though it looks like a tiger endler in one light. It's that one, right there. It turns purple and blue, and then it's yellow, like yellow as can be in plain light. Now, it's purple, blue, and green in, in like light from the side. 
So I'm also going to try breeding that one with a select few females. Uh, and then this is where I keep my medium size fry. And a couple shrimp. I don't know why there's shrimp up here, but there are. And if they can do it, we're good for them. So, RE2s, hopefully they'll be breeding those soon. The RE2 eggs are here, along with the reticulatus eggs. Uh, let's see here. You know you can call me most of the time, most any time if you're depressed and want to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for saying you like my videos. I appreciate it. Um... I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I've got to get some rest. Even just that video is tiring. But I'm getting better. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be saying. So uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Um, and take care of yourselves. Have fun with your tanks. Hey, there's the Pleco and all the babies. I don't know. what. Why are they hanging out? What's going on? Um, all right, guys. Well, take it easy, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Swim on.